hey, we all know that uh, this is a crazy real estate market and um, it's tough to get your offer accepted if you're a buyer. And so I see all these posts and all this advice out there about, you know, tricks and tips and what you need to know to get your to get your offer accepted. But there's one piece of advice that's being given. It's been given for a long time and it's given way too often. And it actually can land you in a lot of trouble if you're a buyer. So, hey, I'm Tom Schieber with Sereno out here in Brentwood. And look, our market is super hot, low interest rates, low inventory, um, the urban exodus, right? People moving from the cities to the suburbs. And so our market is super hot. Um, Sacramento, Tracy Mountain House, even up in Tahoe, right? This is where people are getting out to get more space, more value, and there just aren't enough homes on the market. So we've got the super competitive market, and I understand buyers, you need help, you need guidance. That's why I hire an agent, an expert who can help you navigate the market and get your offer accepted, right? It's a great idea, but listen to their advice, take their advice, you know, work with a professional. But there's one piece of advice that's given, I think, like I said, far too often, and it's not right. And that's um, this idea that you're going to write a letter to the seller and that you're going to tug on the heartstrings with a letter about you and your family, maybe a picture of your good-looking kids, and um, that's going to get your deal accepted. And you know what? The truth is it might work, um, but here's what people don't realize. It's illegal. It's discriminatory. The seller can't make their decision on who they're going to sell the house to based on somebody's, you know, race or religion or age or family status, you know, if they're married or not married, have kids, don't have kids. Um, and when you write that letter and you tell them about your family and the age of your kids and you include a picture, I get it. Sellers want to do that, right? We live in these houses and we make memories and we raise families and it's emotional. I mean, I have a buddy who said his wife cried when they sold in, they, they traded in their suburban, right? Because it's emotional. We make these these family memories and, and our house even more so, of course, right? So then we see a family come along and they look like us and, and, and just a younger version of us and they have kids and we want to sell them our house. And even if it's not the best offer, even if they don't have the biggest down payment or the highest likelihood to close or the best terms or the highest price, we just, you know, we like these people. We want them to have our house. And, and you know, there are laws, anti-discrimination laws that um, make that illegal and they're good laws, right? We shouldn't be deciding who gets to buy a house based on what they look like or where they're from or whether or not they're married or have kids. Um, those are discriminatory practices. And in this time, especially, we're, we're all thinking about those things. And, you know, there are these blind spots that we don't have, you know, we don't know we have. And, and maybe this is one of them in, in thinking that I want a family and people that look like me to, to buy my house. And, and you may not be a racist. It doesn't make you a racist. Um, and it may be, but look, if there's a single person or an unmarried couple or, uh, you know, uh, some older person, person that wants to buy your house, man, you've got to make that, that, uh, you know, treat everybody the same and make your decision based on other factors. I've gotten in trouble with agents over the years who, you know, multiple offer situations. They asked me if I showed the letter to my seller and I've told them I, I wouldn't because I don't want my sellers making an emotional decision. I wanted to make a business decision and let's take the best offer and let's not look at the names of the people or how many names are on the contract. Let's just look at what are they offering? What's the price? How much down? What are the timelines? What contingencies are involved? Where, you know, where's their financing? What's it look like? Proof of funds? All those kind of things. Can they give us uh, possession after close, right? There's a lot of things to factor in. Will they take it as is? Um, There's a lot of things to factor in before we ever talk about. And everybody wants to know, hey, do you know who the sellers are? Do you know what they're like? Um, you know, do they have kids? And, and sellers ask me that all the time. Totally natural. Totally understand. Does not make them bad people or racists or anything like that. But I don't want to talk about those things. I just want to get you in the best deal possible and get it closed. So, um Take advice from your agents. Do what they tell you to do. Write where they tell you you need to write because they know the market. They know how many offers and what it's going to take. Um, but this practice, and CAR actually came out with a form um, back in October. They finally came out with a form that addressed this and highlighted fair housing laws and actually discourages or, or says not to, not to include these letters with your offer. So CAR, the California Association of Realtors, has gotten on board with this as well. Um, so just something to think about, some advice. I don't want anybody to get in trouble because they sell their house um, or they put themselves in a position where uh, somebody comes back on them and say that they were discriminated against. Uh, so not many people may have known that, but that's, uh, that's my uh, warning for the day, my tip for the day. <laughs>